Osman Tore is a young Gambian politician who has been able to master the ins and outs of African politics and why many African leaders have been poorly performing. Recently, he was invited to be a panel member at an economic summit and people couldn't believe their eyes when the young man started speaking. Let's watch this video. I will be back. Um, one thing that is certain is, you see, it is easier to mismanage money or funds that are borrowed or comes in grant than funds that are mobilized by grassroots individuals. Um, if we have a common project here and all of us put in one dollar, we will all go back home keeping track of where our one dollar is going. And that doesn't make politicians comfortable. So that is a no-go area for many governments in the continent. Now, when it comes to the infrastructure in Africa, we have to understand that we cannot get the world work for the continent, as in my friend's words, unless and until we have the infrastructure that attracts them to work and get something remaining. The poor infrastructure is what enables capital flights and direct investment occurring within Africa. Because in most instances today, when we look at the logistics, for instance, how many of our big businesses, the likes of Dangote, who invest a lot on distribution, will tell you that in many African society today, the Dangote group cannot operate as a result of poor logistic, poor infrastructure, and not having the ability to negotiate or making it easy by African governments for their projects or their company to reach. Now, we cannot talk about regional integration if we do not build the infrastructure across the continent. The Gambia, where I am from, is just about two million people. We are one of the smallest markets in the world. How do we expect the Gambia to produce and grow if an infrastructure is not built for Gambians to integrate and interact and do business with Ghanaians, Nigerians, and other parts of the continent? Another good example is Rwanda today is seen as one of the fastest growing economies in the world. In the top 10, Rwanda is there. In terms of size in the economy, is around 143 out of 193. That is the disaster that occurs because there is no common market across the continent. So these are things that we, the youths, of course, find very difficult to comprehend. And this is what I believe could be our solution, that with the big entrepreneurs that we have there, the big business and developers, the Dangotes, my friend here, um, Freedom, and the list goes on. There are so many Africans who need to rethink about investment in the continent instead of hoarding and hiding our money outside of the continent. We have to come, have trust in the youths, invest in the skills, and influence our governments to forcefully put the enabling grounds so that we can integrate. It doesn't matter if I walk across the continent. As I told you, I've traveled a lot and so many countries in Africa now. And all I see is brothers and sisters hungry of skills. I've seen youths building and making doors, gates in Nigeria, in the province of Nigeria, where we import them from China and Dubai, in the Gambia. Yes. This is the problem. And we cannot enhance this unless and until an infrastructure is built to put all of us together. Mm -hmm. And that is what we need to invest in now as a continent. Africa as a continent, we are made to believe that we have to stick with the financial institutions and financial dealings which are already set by a world without consulting Africa. And this has been the biggest disasters that we young people in the continent will have to live 
generations to pay for. When we look at the numbers, we keep borrowing and yet don't multiply. And yet the same numbers that we're talking about cannot be channeled into human development. And that is the threat, that is the fear, and that is the anger and frustration that every African youth today is facing. So we need to have a paradigm shift in the way we deal with the rest of the world, first by looking at partnership. But then a key important element will be how do we capitalize on wealth generation within our own environment without destroying it for future generations, but at the same time have an independent Africa that is fit to produce and distribute for itself evenly. But whenever it comes to the numbers, I am telling you that not just myself, but the 450 plus million youths of the continent are all living in fear of a debt we have to live and pay for. And it has not done anything meaningful to our life and for generations of Africans to come. The first important aspect that we need to invest in as young people, and this is what I've been doing for the past two years, is to invest in the mindset. It is not all the time the skill set. We have young people that are dynamic and have skills and can change the paradigm. But how do we change in our thoughts and look inward in the continent to make sure that Africa is able to produce for its own? In the, by December around 2019, I was offered a scholarship to go and study abroad. And this is for the young people. I toned this down and said I wanted to remain in Africa, to study in an African university, to study in an African country, to better equip me to build on those bases and understand Africa more, integrate and interact with the young people out here so that we can save the future that we want. From that day till now, I've engaged thousands of young Africans on dialogues intergenerational dialogues to provide a blueprint that we as young people can rely on for the sustainability of our continent. I love the direction of Africa at the moment. The new generation are more enlightened about the political affairs of Africa. They understand many of our leaders are just serving their masters and many of our current leaders are also uh, working for the western country and therefore act as puppets so they understand the system the system majority of african leaders are now operating as the young man said he said if you take money from your citizens they are going to ask for accountability. But if you go for loans, the leaders won't own us any explanation or any accountability. That is what we have to avoid. We have to find a way of generating income from within ourselves so that we can fight or we can fight the leaders or we can call the leaders out when they try to misuse our money. The guys has really talked a lot and there's nothing for me to say or for me to even add on. He has really, he's really enlightened about African politics and I'm really excited that the young ones have started taking the affairs of our political space. It's very interesting and I'm praying more of this comes up. And I think we are going to have a very bright future as Africans. Please, you can join us on Telegram by going to my description box and click on the Telegram link. 
so that you can join us on Telegram for us to discuss about the world being on Africa. If today is your first time here, then I will say you have no option than to just subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification button so that anytime I upload any great content, you will be notified. Thanks for watching.